Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Glad to have you in here today. Um, this week uh, we're going to be working on a special little project. Uh, as you know, um, many of you know, I've been working with uh, uh, Cousin Vinny, BNSF6951, on his uh, Scratch Building with the Cuz on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. I will put links in the description below for that video and uh, a reminder to join us uh, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern for the Scratch Build class. But um, I'll show you what I've been working on on the class and we're just in the mock-up stage right now. But uh, I'll show you what I'm working on and what I'm going to be building uh, when I make it a permanent structure and where we're gonna put it. So. Let's head on over to the bench and I'll show you what I got going and then I'll show you what we're going to do today. So what we were working on, and this is a mock-up in cardboard. So we've been using poster board because you don't want to use uh, regular styrene sheets when you're still just figuring out what you're going to make because this stuff's expensive. Um, so what Vinny has us doing is uh, making a mock-up with poster board at first. So this was the first thing that I built in the class. And basically you can take a hopper car uh, and it's big enough to fit in here uh, on tracks. And it can be like a, a place where the uh, hopper cars get dumped or it can be a maintenance shed or something like that. So I kind of decided I wanted it to be a maintenance shed. So. The next class we did, uh, he had us working with a for sale sign. So you get this styrene, you just buy a 99 cent or a dollar for sale sign. And the styrene is, of course, much uh, thinner and it's bendable, but it's so much cheaper that you, uh, you can easily build on, you know, what you want to build and mock it up. Um, and get it all set the way you want it. So what I've got going on here is I've taken the basic structure like we had and I've added an office space on the front or like a tool room and I added a baggage door or a, you know, a double door that materials can be brought in and out. And I've decided I'm going to make it a, a maintenance shed for uh, rolling stock like box cars or hopper cars or anything that they want to work on it's going to be maintenance so i'll show you on the layout where i'm going to have it but i'll have some industrial windows here now um i ordered them on ebay uh from teachy uh, not from teachy but they're teachy these are the uh the, they're called baggage doors but i like it because it's like a industrial door that you can open up and uh so I, I just have that taped in there right now. There'll be a door either here on the side, a man door, definitely one on the front and one or two windows. And then I'll have probably one or two windows on the backside, industrial style, like 27 pane industrial windows. Uh, what I'm gonna do is probably not cut a door on this end because I'll show you over on the layout where it's gonna go. And that wouldn't make sense uh, being that there, there won't be anything further on. But I may cut the door and just have it be a, a big door that's closed. This side will be a door. And I've decided I'm not going to dog ear it like we did on the initial design. Um, just going to have it squared off. And then there'll be, let's see if I have something. Uh, imagine this is the door. It will be open like that, like it's a sectional door that opens kind of like I did on uh, Bob and Dan's uh, shop. So that'll be a, a bay door that's open. Of course, I'll have a roof on here. It's gonna be a uh, uh, like a tin roof with uh, ridges in it, uh, like you see on industrial buildings and same thing down here. So let's head on over to the layout and I'll show you where it's gonna go and what we're gonna do to prepare for that once we build the permanent structure out of the uh, evergreen styrene sheets. Okay, so over here on the layout, you all know how I added 
a one by eight on the front here to make a rail yard. And I extended my shelf from originally being like a one by six to a one by 10. Uh, so it gives me a place to have my controllers, uh, my books and stuff under there. And that's not gonna change. But over here, as you remember where I put the uh, tower, the interlocking tower, uh, I left this uh, just cut short here. So from here to the end of the layout's about two feet. I'm gonna, today what we're gonna do is we're going to add that piece of one by eight onto the shelf here. And then we're gonna, I have some more of the cork road bed, cork board, which is going to be on top, like you can see here. And we'll lay that on, on the piece. And then that, what that's gonna allow us to do is we're gonna remove this uh, stop here and add on probably a switch where it'll go straight and either that stop will end here or it'll go to the end and end there. I'm not sure yet the positioning of this, uh, but we'll have a switch so that it switches off and you can run the car into the maintenance shed. Um, the, the particulars about where this will be placed, I mean, I have a lot of choices. Um, it can be out here, it can be over here. Uh, so wherever we're gonna have it, uh, we'll figure that out later. But today's project is gonna be we're gonna go out to the shop. We're gonna cut another cleat like this that's gonna sit on over on this end and then we'll cut off the uh, the board, the width we need, get it attached with some screws and then get our uh, cork board glued on. And then that'll allow us to go ahead and do the track work however we wanna do it. I've got, I still have a couple of switches. So I've got a right switch and a left switch here. Of course, I use uh, Atlas Code 83. Uh, yeah, Code 83. Make sure I had the right one. And uh, I've got a package here of straight uh, sections. So uh, looks nine inch straight, five pieces or uh, six pieces actually. So I think with that, I'll have enough to do what I need to do here. So. Let's go ahead and uh, get some measurements down and then we'll head out to the shop, get those cut up and then come down and get it attached. All right, so let's see here. This is a piece of one by, or two by, uh, inch and a half by inch and a half. And I think I've got some of these out in the shop and I've got seven inches there for that. So uh, the width is seven inches on that cleat, so one and a half by one and a half, uh, seven inches. Okay, then I've got the piece of uh, one by seven, or it's one by eight, but actually one by eight these days is half, uh, three quarter by seven. <laughs> so uh, all I need to worry about is this length here. And that's, uh, yeah, two feet, 23 and seven eighths length so that'll sit there another seven inch cleat there boom we can screw it down and then uh, we can uh, glue down our cork board all right out here in the shop i uh, went ahead and got my materials together uh i don't have a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half but i do have this inch and a half by two and a half um so I'm just gonna use that. There's no reason that it it needs to be inch and a half. That just happens to be what I had when I built that. So it can be a little wider. If I had to, I could cut it down uh, with my saw, but uh, I, right now I'm not really it, it, getting my table saw out. Just zoom over here. I'm gonna use my chop saw. Um, so we'll be using that. That's my table saw underneath, but uh, not going to bother ripping that down to inch and a half just so that it's inch and a half. It can be a little wider. No big deal. Here's the piece here. So we're going to lay it out and uh, get it marked up and then we can go make the cuts. 
All right, so I've marked out 23 and 7 eighths on my board length here. Just double check it, measure twice, cut once. That's pretty darn good. I'll square it up. And you know, we're not building a custom cabinet, so I'm not real concerned with everything being perfect. But uh, now we'll do the same here. I made sure that uh, everything was squared off, nice square cuts. So remember we said seven inches on this guy. So let's measure off seven inches. Looks good, seven inches square, make the reference line. All right, now we're good. We'll take it over to the uh, saw and get them cut. All right, looks like we're all lined up. We'll go ahead and make the cut. And we'll just double check it here. Looking pretty good. Just a hair over seven inches, which is fine. So pretty good. So let's go ahead, we'll get the other one cut. All right, I got the pieces cut. We went in and blew them off with the air compressor. So I've got the uh, the piece there and then the, uh, the wide piece. You're gonna need a drill. I've got the bits uh, and the, the driver downstairs. So, and I've got screws downstairs. So I think, think we're good to go. Take that stuff downstairs and uh, we'll get started installing it. All right, so here's the uh, seven inch piece. Just considering which side I want visible, this looks pretty good. So that can sit like that. I'm lining it up to the edge of the shelf over here. Just uh, butting it up against the layout there. And I've got my screws. So I've got my uh, drill with the uh, the driver so let's put it to the drill side we'll drill a pilot hole we'll countersink it i think we only need two that's pretty good right there and we'll do another one here all right let's switch it over to the drill driver and we'll pop the dust off here make sure there's no dust underneath screw started in each one. I don't think we're going to need three screws. I'm sure two will be enough. Let's set our clutch back so I'm not... There, we go. get that started. Now I'm just going to make sure that I'm flush with the outside edge of the shelf. Just a hair inside. Yeah, got to set that clutch a little bit better. Let's do this other screw here. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. All right, that's on there pretty good. It's straight. All right, now we'll take our piece of shelving and I think I'll save the sorry I got this sunbeam in here since we're gonna glue cork to the top it doesn't matter which side I use it's finished on both sides so what I care about is what's gonna show on this edge and they're they're still they're both good so let's just see what fits best that seems fine there might be a slight cup to it uh, a little bit. So I kind of like that. I think that'll be fine. So I'm just going to move this car here and we'll get the drill. Get it good to go. 
couple more screw holes here. do is drive the screws and we're good to go. I'm going to grab my brush and uh, or the vacuum and vacuum up this these chips. Then we'll drive the screws. And for those of you who may not know, one of the handiest things I ever did was I installed a power strip right on the front of the layout there. And that powers some of the lights and but it always gives you a nice uh, outlet handy <laughs> to uh, plug in vacuums or tools or anything you need. Okay, there we go. It is installed and looking pretty good. It's sturdy, but a couple of screws, no big deal. It's not going to go anywhere. So now we will take and get this cork cut, a nice strip to set right on there, and then we'll get that glued on. Getting ready to make the final cut on the cork board here. Um, so uh, it's a little tricky. I have to use weights to hold it down because it wants to roll up, but I've got it cut up to this point. So we're uh, going to just cut the last bit and then I'll have a piece seven wide by 23 and seven eighths long. All right, I'm just test fitting the cork here. Um, mostly it's very important that this is a good joint here. Uh, no big deal if it's not. I can always fill it with some filler. And then, of course, you know, I'll put some turf on there. Now, this is the street, the parking lot where these guys park for the tower. I'm going to continue that somehow over here and make it tie in so that uh, that's how you get over to the road. I'm not sure how I'll do that yet. I may do some uh, construction on here and uh, carve out a road or maybe it'll run behind the shop that we're gonna be putting in here. This is just a piece of stone I have holding the cork down. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with that. So it's looking good. It came up just a wee bit short here, but no big deal. Um, actually uh, doesn't need to be any longer than the layout there. So I'll just trim that off once I get it down uh, and it'll be fine. So. Uh, now we'll grab, I think we'll use some uh, foam tack glue, which works a lot like uh, contact cement. We'll coat the wood, we'll coat the underside of the, the uh, uh, this stuff, the <laughs> cork, and uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, lay it down. All right, this is the uh, foam tack glue that I used to lay the road beds down. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put a good amount on the wood here. And I've got a brush. So I'll just spread it out. And I'll just make sure I've got a good amount next to the seam here. That ought to do pretty good. I'm spreading it out pretty thinly because if I ever have to take this back up again, I'm going to have to take the cork off and unscrew uh, there underneath. So uh, just making sure the edges have a good amount so it doesn't peel up on me along here too. I don't want it on the layout like I got right there. So, okay. 
that's good. We'll let that dry. Um, it'll look clear when it's dry. Get a little bit there. I don't think I got enough there. There, that looks good. Nice thin coat. All right, that'll look clear when it gets dry. And then uh, let's go put the uh, same amount on the bottom of the cork. All right, it's gonna do the same thing here. Make sure I get it on the edges. We'll go up to the drill because that's holding it down right now. And then we'll do that after. So I'm just gonna spread it out just like I did on the wood. All right, we're fairly dried on the uh, cork here. It's a little bit uh, still tacky wet over there. Let's go see how the wood is. Wood looks completely good. See how it's shiny, but it's clear. So that's ready to go. So let's, uh, I think we're good. I'm gonna uh, go grab the cork and we'll apply it. Okay, I've got, got the cork. It's uh, pretty good. I'm gonna line it up here. Like I said, I'm going to be mostly concerned with this joint over here. And this is a little more forgiving than regular contact cement, but you do want to kind of get it right the first time. That's not too bad there, so we'll just go along here like that. And there. Oh, I'm liking it. It's looking pretty darn good. Came out nice. Edge is good. Right here. Lay it. Just put some pressure on. I don't have any air in there. Might be a little bit loose right there. That's good. Okay. Get it along the edge there real good. All right, there it is. Now I've got a little bit, it actually, now that it's all rolled out um, the way it's supposed to be, it actually is hanging over a little bit much here. So it's actually perfect. So I'll trim that uh, just so it's a nice even line and then we're good. All right, there it is. Um, it's laid down. You can see where the, su the sun has faded the cork from before so this is the fresh stuff but there it is it's all laid down it's all sitting down nicely i've got it trimmed up real nice on the edge so got a nice smooth edge here i've got another place i can stash stuff i can if i want my uh controller uh, uh books and uh books for my locomotives down there got a nice place to stash them so that's going to be all right. So now uh, that'll be it for this video. But uh, the next one, we'll talk about how we're going to lay out the track and what we're going to do here. If we're going to have a switch going over that way and have two tracks, or uh, I don't know if we have room for three. Uh, I don't think I'd want to do that, but uh, probably two and have uh, one terminate here. Both of them terminate, actually. Um, I guess someday, and like I've spoken in the past, some of my past videos I've considered maybe expanding on going that way, having a curve, uh, but that'll be a while. <laughs> but uh, for now, we've added on a nice little amount to our yard, uh, so uh, we'll see what we come up with. Uh, getting that shop placed the way we want it, the road. Um, I'm thinking that this would actually be a really good place for the road to come in here because there's already a, a dip there. I can just fill that in, have the road come and uh, be part of the parking lot for the tower. So that's probably what we'll do. And then uh, we'll have to figure out where we want the shop to sit and uh, the tracks to be. So that'll be the next video. So uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. And uh, uh, thank you to all you new subscribers. We are, I think, think at 364 which uh, like I say every week blows my mind thank you so much thank you for the comments 
and the questions keep them coming and uh, uh, it's just awesome. So again, thanks for joining uh, today and uh, we'll see you next update. Take care. Hey guys and gals, I also just wanted to quickly mention if uh, you're interested in anything that uh, has my uh, Dan's Grand Valley logo on it, uh, you can grab those at my new Teespring store. I'll link to it in the description below. But I got some pretty cool mugs, got some t-shirts, uh, some tote bags and different things available. So uh, if you want to go check it out, uh, that would be awesome. Thanks again. Really appreciate it.